Hello friends, welcome to this video lecture of traffic engineering and management. So today we will continue our discussion on public transportation. So uh, basically in this uh, lecture, we will be discussing about uh, transit fares, we'll be discussing about suburban and urban metro rail transportation. We'll be discussing about intermediate public transportation. So, uh, we'll be discussing about various elasticity feature, features of the transit fares. We'll be discussing about the marketing of public transportation. We'll be discussing about the suburban rail transportation, metro rail transportation. We will be looking at, uh, about the discussions about the intermediate public transportation. Intermediate public transportations are nothing but the public transportation methods like auto rickshaws, bicycle rickshaws, uh, like uh, carpools, etc., are included in the intermediate public transportation. So, moving forward, what do we understand by transit fare elasticity? Transit fare elasticity is measured by the percentage change in transit demand per percentage change in fare level. That is, for example, if there is a change in the fare level, if suppose from point A to point B, the fare is 20 rupees per person. Now, if that fare is increased to 21 rupees or 22 rupees, then what will be the effect on the number of people using that particular transit system? Now, for example, it, let us talk about city bus system. Now, suppose we are talking about the city Guwahati and suppose from, from Jalukbari to Paltan Bajar, the transit fare is suppose 15 rupees. Now, if that 15 rupees is increased to 18 rupees, Will there be some persons who will avoid going by city buses and use other transportation? Yes or no? If it is a very less increase, then the number of people who will shift the transportation mode will be very negligible or maybe zero. But if there is a very high rise, if suppose the uh, cost of transportation is increased from 15 rupees to 30 rupees per person, then we may observe that a huge amount of people will shift from one mode of transportation to another mode of transportation. Why if it is 30 rupees, then so people may feel that let us use other modes of transportation, like maybe some will prefer Uber or some will prefer that let us book a uh, Uber by uh, making a group of people, like let four of us uh, become together and uh, move together by booking one Uber or Ola. So they will move shift from uh, public transportation to a different from bus transportation to a different public transportation or there may be others who may feel that it's better for me to buy my own car than paying a such a huge fare in the as the bus fare so a little increase in fare doesn't affect the fare elasticity the higher increase in fares will obviously affect the fare elasticity the transit fare elasticity varies with three important parameters and these are the three purpose income level and the level of service level of service of the transportation system we are talking about okay so moving forward let us discuss about the fare classification the various types of fares can be broadly classified into three different parameters okay so when we move from one point to another in a public transportation let it be bus or train or whatever mode of transportation, you pay a certain amount of money as fare. So how it is classified? It's classified into three parameters. One is flat fare. Another one is variable fare. And another one is a special fare. What is flat fare? If you pay one amount, if suppose from A to any point of uh, in that particular route, you pay 20 rupees per person, then that is called flat fare. If you move for two kilometers you will pay 20 rupees if you move for 15 or 20 kilometers you pay 20 rupees that is the flat fare now for example uh, during last uh, december january i was in vietnam so at ho chi minh when i was traveling by city bus i found that there was a flat fare of 6000 uh, vietnamese dong okay 6,000 Vietnamese dong is approximately equal to 18 rupees of Indian currency. So from any place where I want to move, I found that I had to, in certain routes, I had to pay only 
6,000 Vietnamese dong, that is 18 Indian rupees. If I'm moving for a short location, then also it's 18 rupees. If for a uh, further greater amount of location I am moving, uh, moving, then also the fare is fixed as 6,000 Vietnamese dong or in Indian currency it is 18 rupees. Next is the variable fare. So it is the common fare that we see in any places that is the, from one point to another it is uh, like a, so for example if you move for 5 kilometers it is uh, 0 to 5 kilometers it is fixed that uh, you have to pay 7 rupees. After that for every kilometer an increase of 2 rupees or 3 rupees that is the variable fare. Next special fare will be there for some special people like for elderly senior citizen if there is a discount that is called the special fare. So in the graph here we can see what is a flat fare that is flat for any it does not depend on the distance okay. Moving forward I have already discussed that uh, the in about the variable fare and uh, special fare. The variable fare can also be like this depending on the distance or other factors like sectional and zonal fares. See the diagram over here. This diagram where we can see some steps here. This is the sectional fare. Means from 0 to x0 kilometer, the fare is y0. Again, if you move from x0 to suppose x1, the fare is y1. Okay. So, for example, from 0 to 5 kilometers, the fare is 7 rupees. From 5 to 10 kilometer range, the fare will be suppose 10 rupees. Then again, 10 to 15 kilometer, the fare will be suppose 12 rupees. So this is fixed. Okay. For every section, that is the sectional fare. Okay. Uh, uh, and the distance fare is a gradual increase. From 0 to 5 kilometer, suppose there is a fixed fare. From 5 kilometer, it is a gradual increase. Y equal to mx plus c. And there are other fares like zonal fares. It can be easily understood by seeing this diagram. This, this is a fair zone in monocentric area. This is a fair zone in polycentric area. As you move away from your radius, the fare will be increasing. Okay, moving forward. So there is one important parameter in the public transportation system that is subsidy. There are two types of subsidy. One is operational subsidy and another one is capital subsidy. Let us discuss about the capital subsidy first. The, what is capital subsidy? If suppose government uh, provide certain kinds of relaxation when you want to purchase one transport uh, invest in some transport system like you want to purchase one bus okay or you want to purchase one taxi or you want to purchase one auto rickshaw so the government says that since you are a, an unemployed youth of the country so the government is telling that 30 percent of the money will be paid by the government or the government is giving you certain loans with zero rate of interest or with very minimal rate of interest. That kind of subsidies are called capital subsidy. That is or the subsidy that is provided to the in the initial phase of any business. The another one is the operational subsidy. Now, for example, there is a, some subsidy. One, one person is moving from one point to another. The fare should be 10 rupees. The government is telling that I will pay 50% of the fare. Five rupees is borne by the government. Five rupees is borne by the citizens maybe in some rural areas to enhance, to encourage people to move from one point to another to, so that business happens. If the business happens, then only the country will progress, okay? Though the government provides subsidy in one direction, in another direction, if there is business, government earns tax and earns money in that direction and that money government can invest in terms of subsidy to the marginalized and the poor people. Now, if you see in this, particular figure here you will observe that from point p2 to point p3 this particular area is the subsidy this particular line is the subsidy provided okay this particular line is the market demand and there are two other lines which is the market supply pre-subsidy and another one is market supply post subsidy i hope you have already uh, well aware about the demand supply curve okay so moving forward, what is the goal of transit marketing? Okay, so there is certain kind of advertisement and certain kind of transit marketing required. For every kind of business, there is marketing. 
now there is suppose a business of two wheelers or four wheelers okay we see in and around us there are so many four wheeler companies those companies those car companies those two wheeler companies they market themselves that you buy our two wheeler and it will be your life will be very easy very comfortable isn't it similarly if the government or if the society there is no marketing of the public transportation then there will be very less users so it is important that there should be sufficient amount of marketing of the public transportation so that people feel proud to move in the public transportation so that people uses public transportation and whenever more and more public transportation will be used there will be more and more people moving from one point to another in less amount of money okay which will lead to more amount of development so what is what are basically the goals of transit marketing to attract private vehicle users to public transportation so as the car companies and bike companies will say that you buy my cars and vehicles so the transit vehicle or departments will say that you use the city buses you use the metro rails those are very convenient okay then and try to attract the people from using the private transportation next to retain the existing public transport users so the existing transport users okay one way of marketing is to make give more amount of comfort to the people who are presently using this public transport systems so if you maintain clean buses metro rails if you maintain the buses bus systems or metro rail systems in, in proper time then what will happen the public will be more happy and likewise the public the existing users who are presently using that systems they will not move to private transport when the other people will say that okay you can use your own car or you can buy your own bike that person will say that no i am very happy comfort and uh, i am comfortable moving in the bus or metros because i have my own time uh, i can do some other work i can listen to music or i can like uh, do some other work in my laptop or in my uh, mobile while traveling or i can even read a book while traveling so this saves time this saves money so those people if they are happy in their transportation they will be not they will not be shifting to the other mode of transportation next idea is to create a brand that carriers desired values with it okay so if there is a brand value of the public transportation people will be more prone to use that public transportation so if you have moved to uh, if you have been to bangalore sometimes and if you have used the bangalore metro that bangalore metro is said as namma metro okay you will see lots of uh, uh, sign boards written as namma metro okay so there is a common person who doesn't understand kannada i say i just saw thought that it is namma metro not, i do not understand the meaning so today i just thought that there should be some brand value of meaning of that word namma so when i searched that the word namma metro meaning in google i found that namma metro means our metro so when the metro people says that namma metro it's our metro so the people the kannada people the local people using that metro they will feel more sense of belongingness okay that creates a brand value that creates a tagline the next important goal is to increase the market penetration of trips if there are more amount of trips then there more amount of revenue will be generated then only it, there will be success of creating this public transportation moving forward so what are the marketing strategies i have already discussed some of the strategies again to name them one is the branding the system marketing for revenue marketing for revenue means for example you will see that there are many city buses or like uh, uh, taxis they provide advertisements of various other brands now for example you may see in some taxi or in some bus some logo of airtel so airtel is paying money to that particular city bus or to that particular auto rickshaw or to that particular taxi that is a marketing strategy okay to earn the revenue next point is to reach all socio economic segments okay there should be the marketing strategy to reach all types of socio economic segments so if there is a metro rail or if there is a uh, city bus system there should be some kind of in metro rail if there is a uh, there is a special bogey for like people with uh, higher class that they can afford that uh, particular bogey or that particular city bus paying some higher amount of money they may use that particular those particular systems isn't it so 
the target should, should be to reach all kind of socioeconomic segments. We should reach the marginalized and the poor section of the people. We should also reach the higher section of the people. Other marketing strategies include the conduct, conducting several outreach programs so that people know more and more about the public transportation. So what can be marketed in public transportation? So what is the best thing in public transportation? I have already discussed some of the, the things. So the best things about public transportation is about socializing. If you're moving in trains or buses, you get to know more people, you get to observe more people. So that's a socializing nature, which is very, very important for a good mental health of any individual. Counter risk of private vehicles like accidents. Public transportation vehicles counters the risk of accidents. So the risk of accidents in a private four-wheeler is much more compared to a city bus or a private bus or a metro rail. Okay. In travel work, I have already said in travel also you can work. If you're having a laptop, you can moving in a metro rail. If there is sufficient amount of space in front of you, you can open up your laptop and you can work during your travel. You can have open your tab or you can open your mobile and you can work. Okay. Public transportation is more inclusiveness. You feel more inclusive with the society. The fare is low. Okay. The fare moving, the cost of moving from one point to another is much less in public transportation compared to your private transportation system. That is your own four wheelers or using your own two wheelers. Moving forward. What is the suburban commuter rail. Suburban commuter rail is the rail network that is being used to transport from the suburban areas. That is from the central location, which is located far away from the central business district or the city center area to the city center or the central business district area. Okay. So what happens if we have good transportation system to the suburban, re suburban region, the city will not be overpopulated, okay? So that is why the suburban uh, transportation is very, very important. If we do not have proper suburban reason, then all the people will tend to come and settle down in the near the city center or the central business district area, and that will lead to a chaotic situation. Now, suppose, for example, we can say, uh, if you understand the Bijoynagar or Mirza area, or for example, uh, Bayhata Sariali area to be suburban in comparison to Guwahati. Okay. Uh, suppose a person who is going from Misa or Bijanagar or Soigam or uh, Bayhata Sariali to Guwahati, it will take for him around one hour to move. Okay. In any local train. So if sufficient good amount of uh, uh, good facility, public transportation is available, that person will not settle down in Guwahati or that in the city center, that person will prefer to move uh, uh, in public transportation. Okay. So that will decrease the load of the city Guwahati. So that is why suburban lines are very, very important. These suburban commuter lines have helped the development of satellite towns and urban nodes relieving overcrowding in city center. The main objective of suburban Rail is to help people settled in suburban locations to commute. So those people who are settled in suburban regions, they can easily commute using this suburban commuter rails. Now let us discuss about the rapid rail transit. The rapid rail transit, also known as metro, subway or underground rail transit, is a high capacity network service to serve an urban area. Delhi Metro Rail Corporation is a very successful example of rapid rail transport. It was initially thought that Delhi will not be able to sustain a Delhi metro like system. Then uh, under the leadership of uh, Mr. E. Sridharan, who is also known as the Metro Man of India, the Delhi, uh, the, the Delhi Metro Rail Corporation was established and uh, it has proved to be one of the best in the world. Okay. So uh, this Metro rails, the rapid rail transit, imp uh, that there is a huge amount of cost involved in the construction of this, but it uh, helps in uh, transport. It helps immensely. There is an immense help in transportation in the urban areas, but there is a huge amount of 
cost involved. Initial cost, the high capital cost of setting up of rapid rail transit system has been a major deterrent for developing countries. It's so huge that some countries are not able to afford. In India also, we have very few cities having rapid, metro, rapid rail transit. Why we are not having in all the cities? Because of the cost. Here is a table showing you the cost of construction. If it is a surface level, it is 40 million Indian rupees per kilometer. If it is elevated, the cost is more. We do not see surface level. Very rarely we see surface level. Mostly we see elevated or underground. If it is elevated, it is 300 million. If it is tunnel cut and cover, then it is 900. If it is tunnel board under the ground, it is 1300 million per kilometer. So I think you can estimate how costly it is. So these are certain guidelines provided by the government of India, uh, Ministry of Urban Development, government of India to uh, decide that where we, when we will construct metro rail, where we will construct, construct light rail, light rail trans transit or, or where we will construct mono rail. If the peak hour, peak direction traffic on the proposed corridor, peak hour. That means, for example, if the offices start at nine o'clock from nine to nine thirty, that uh, travel may be at peak hour. Okay. If we are saying the example of Guwahati, and we, are, if you are saying, suppose comparing from Azara to suppose Palton Bazar, the direction from Azara to Palton Bazar will be the peak direction in the morning time. Okay. So. If the peak hour peak direction traffic is greater than 2000, if the population of that city is greater than 2 million, if the average trip length is more than 7-8 kilometers, then the metro rail is recommended. Likewise, we have data for light rail transit and monorail. Please go through the data. So next, we will discuss about the intermediate public transport, which is also known as the paratransit. Okay. So in many smaller cities, we do not have metro rails. It is not required to construct metro rail because the population is less. The amount of people traveling from one place to another is less. And also we do not have in many places, we have a huge amount of city bus network. There's a very less number of city bus network, maybe one or two buses runs in the morning and one or two buses run in the evening. So in those places, how people travel from one point to another, people uses paratransit or intermediate public transport, which are like auto rickshaws, taxis, carpoolings, etc. So uh, this kind of uh, transportation systems are very helpful in those areas. In northeastern uh, India, if you see cities like Silsar, Agartala, you will see that very commonly you will find this kind of small taxis and auto rickshaws. Uh, Silsar town is filled with auto rickshaws. You, from one point to another, there are fixed fares like we have in city buses. People can move using this paratransit transportation system. Okay. There are various advantages and also disadvantages of this paratransit trans, uh, system, also known as intermediate public transportation. So this intermediate public transportation is classified into two categories. One is the contract carriages and another one is informal public transportation system. Okay, so what is contract carriages? Contract carriages are those systems in which moves in an order. They have proper origin, destination and intermediate stops as like city buses do have. In many places in Silchar also, I, as I have said as example, the autos move, they have a proper origin. They start from a point, then they wait in the, the intermediate stops and they reach their destination. And from each stop to each stop, they have a designated fare okay so you need to pay that much fare and you can use the authority so okay so that is the contract carriages and informal public transportation means you can move from any point that is not the, the transportation system is not having any route you take a car uh, taxi you hire a taxi or you hire an auto now if you say for example autos also move in auto rickshaws also move in guwahati uber taxis moves in, moves in guwahati these are informal public transportation, which comes under intermediate public transportation. Okay. Uber taxis, Ola taxis, or any kind of taxis or auto rickshaws in Guwahati are examples of informal public transportation because uh, the auto rickshaws in Guwahati, they do not prefer in, in general, a specified origin destination and intermediate stops. In some areas, we have some tempos 
uh, which move in that manner those are again those will again come in the contract carriages i hope the definition the difference between the contract carriage and informal public transportation is clear so with this we have uh, come to the end of this today's discussions so i have taken reference from the nptl video lectures of on introduction to multimodal urban transportation systems so i suggest all of you to go through this particular uh, nptl lecture also so uh, i hope that the concepts of the importance of uh, what to say intermediate public transportation rail transportation marketing of public transportation is clear okay so with this we would like to conclude for today thank you thank you so much